This is the Yopon Holly. This is North America's coffee plant. The only plant in the United States that contained caffeine. The caffeine is found in its leaves. This plant only grows along the Gulf Coast. It only grows very close to the coast as well. This is a very common understory plant in Texas. It can be identified by the color of its trunk, the gray coloring on the bark of this plant is very distinct. Most hollies do have gray coloring, a gray trunk. Its leaves are small, oval shaped, and serrated. The leaves are dried and then crunch down into a powder to make coffee. You don't have to crunch it into a powder, but it will dilute in the water better. So when the leaves are dried, if you find a dead plant, they will be a very dark, dark brown, almost black, the dried leaves. This plant was very important to the Native Americans that inhabited East Texas. They would collect the leaves, package it, and trade with Indians further north. It was commonly used as a morning stimulant, like our morning coffee, to, with the Native Americans is also used in a more ritual ceremony of cleansing. They would use it before battle or before something important to cleanse their bodies and make a really strong coffee that would cause them to, to vomit, to throw up. Which is one of the reasons why it's scientific name is what it is. It's a very distinct and common plant. Very interesting, very unique. The only plant in the United States that contains caffeine it can be made into a coffee and is very effective. Works just like normal coffee does. The understory growth in these bottomland hardwood forests are also very important to the native wildlife. They are very common in disturbed environments where trees fall and there's wildfires. They also produce bright red fruit. Only female plants produce br the bright red berries, the bright red fruit. But as another characteristic of this species, I will do a video probably in the next week, a taste test of the coffee and how to make it. Many of the native wildlife do browse on its leaves or forage and eat its fruit. Many bird species use it as a food source during the winter time. As do they utilize many other holly species. This is a bit different from my usual snake videos. but Plants are very important to the ecosystem as well and I thought this was an interesting one to do and I can make two videos out of it and it's very commonplace everyone has seen this plant if you live in East Texas you know what this is even if you realize how useful it is or not you've seen it before it is everywhere absolutely everywhere The undergrowth plants in these forests are a significant part of the whole ecosystem, especially hollies that are fruit bearing plants and evergreen, which they provide shelter all year round for wildlife, especially birds.
and they're also very important to the Native Americans throughout prehistory. So overall, a very influential plant. Very important. Not to be overlooked, despite how common and normal looking it is. You wouldn't think that such a inconspicuous organism would have so much about it. There's a good look at its leaves so you can identify it. They do have a toxic look-alike, but it is an invasive plant and it does not have serrated leaves and the leaves are quite much larger than this. These leaves are about the size of the, your fingertip, a little bigger, serrated, evergreen, easy ID for this species. Shouldn't have any trouble finding it either. So if you get a chance, draw the leaves out, make it, taste it. I haven't tasted it yet, but I will. In the future, I'll make a taste test video on this Yopon tea. I guess that's it.